Okay, hey everyone, today we're gonna see if we can do an experiment. So this will be the, to show that the acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the force acting upon it. Okay, so let's just hope this works. So we're gonna look down here. This is gonna be our general setup. So what we have here is we just have a power supply. Now this is gonna be AC in 12 volts and that's just to do the ticker timer. So the ticker timer is basically gonna be like our stopwatch. It's gonna give us the time and this is our trolley okay and you can see now i have three weights on here this will become obvious of why they're stuck on the top for the moment but basically you can see this is our ramp going the whole way along so our ramp goes all the way down to the end and if you can see i've finally found a use for biology books just to prop them up just so there's that a little bit of a tilt and the reason that we want this little bit of a tilt is because i want to eliminate the friction that's on this trolley. So what we want is that this, oh, I'll make this down maybe. So, so I want this trolley to just about move when I give it a little push. And that's going to be so there's going to be a minimal amount of friction along it. So the, the tilt of the slope of the, the ramp is just a counteract the friction. So you can see if I give it a touch it almost goes. So I've almost counteracted, and that's just what I've put the books down here for, just to give it a little bit of a raise. So then, at the other end, this is attached to the string, you can see that, and that is then attached down to here. So this should be a low friction pulley, but we didn't have one of those, and so we're just gonna deal with whatever we got here. And this is gonna be this string going over it, okay? And this, like, this in theory should reduce all the amount of friction, but in reality what it's going to do is at least going to stop the trolley from crashing onto the floor. And on the end of it, I'm just going to stick, there's a little loop, I'm just going to stick a weight that's going to hang down. And this is going to be the mass that we're going to use to accelerate. So we're going to use the surface gravity and the mass of this to produce a force that's going to pull the pulley along. Okay, so we'll go back up here for a second. So these weights here that we have, we're going to use these to vary our different force. So I'm just going to take this back up here. And what we want to do is we're going to add these onto this. Okay, we can't just add extra weights because we, that would change the mass of the system and then nothing would work. So we need to keep the whole mass of both the trolley and this, which is going to be the, the scales that's going to pull it down. We need to keep that the same. So I'm only going to transfer masses from one to the other. And we have different ones so we can do it in different steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on that. Now the mass of the system won't have changed, so I'll have weighed this. It should be fine. I'm hook that. Now, so hopefully we have everything here. We're going to just turn this on. It's going to get quite loud when it does, and the trolley should roll all the way down. So let's see if we can give you a better angle. Uh, maybe not. Get in here. Hopefully, this should work, it might be quite loud when I do this. Just stick on the ticket on Off we go. Well, that sort of worked. Okay, so we're going to show you here what we have. So this is our ticker timer. Um, each one of these dots, can you see that, where is it? There, I'm gonna try to put it up here. Watch I need to focus. Now, I don't know if you can see these little dots, can you? Maybe not, it's a bit bright, is it? Try get right down there. So these are the little dots of the ticker timer. And you can see this is at the start and they were all a bit scratched together. And as it accelerates, the ducts become further and further apart. Okay, now the acceleration on this, this broke after a little while, but that's okay. Because you can see, if you looked at the roller, oh, if you looked at the roller, it, it only it only has like a two foot or like about a 60 centimeter drop before it actually hits the ground. And that's when the constant acceleration won't work anymore. So we're gonna look at this and we're gonna get a bunch of information from this. So let's see what we've got here. Let's go from the very start. So this is at the very start. Let's see. Focus that a bit better. Okay. 
Okay, so we can look at this and basically I'm going to look at two parts here. So we're going to try and find this. This is at the very start and what we're going to do is we're going to find two points. So we'll say this dot here and we always want to put a line in the middle and we'll say that one there. That's one. And we're going to use this. This is going to be a distance and a time and we're going to use that to create an initial velocity. And then I'm going to move forward a bit more and say about here. Now this should be a constant acceleration. So it shouldn't really matter which ones you take as long as we, we take them before the weights have hit the ground and then the constant acceleration should be gone. So in theory I could do the next ones first but the more we give it the more gap the generally the more accurate it'll be. So we've got these and there you can see that. I don't know how yeah, so it's just the light blocking on it. Okay, so what we're gonna have here Be a better. There we go. See if I can block out the light. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this, and you can see that there it's about four and a half centimeters, or 0 0.45, and that'll be s2. And we're going to measure the first one here as well, and that's about I don't know 1.8 centimeters. Okay, and what we're going to do then is we're going to create a table, sort of like this, and here's some values that I did earlier. Okay, so this is going to be S1, so this, this S1 here is basically just the distance that we're going to measure with the measuring tape in between those two. That's all that is, and S2 will be the next one. And then, for an initial velocity, well, we know that our ticker timer puts down a dot every 50th of a second. So we can tell that two, the distance between that one and two is going to be, that's going to be two fiftieths of a second. That'll be the time. So if we have a time and a distance, we can use it for our initial velocity, and we do the same then for the final velocity. So each of these, that, that distance is two fiftieths of a second, so we can work out well their velocities. And then the time in between, well that's all we're going to do is, because we're looking from the centre one there, we're just going to count them up, all the little dots. And each dot of these is going to be one fiftieth of a second. So your time here is just going to be n, the number of dots divided by 50 and that will give you your time between your initial and your final velocity. And so using that we can just use our acceleration equation which is your final velocity minus your initial divided by the time and then the mass well that's just what we had <coughs> on the top of this. So that's just the mass so we can just use a weighing scales or a Newton balance for that and then of course our mass if we've used the weighing scales we just multiply it by the surface gravity so 9.8 and we can get all these values. So, we're going to repeat that, removing all the weights off the cart and onto that. And then, if we plot this force against acceleration, we should get something that looks like this. Now, it probably won't, because when do our experiments ever work that well? But in theory, this is it. So, this is going to be our force and our acceleration. And this should have a line that goes through the origin, a straight line. And this shows that it has to be directly proportional. So by doing this graph, we automatically show that this has to be directly proportional to that because it means this is what we have. So your force is proportional to A. Now we know it's mass. Okay? So what the mass is, the mass is going to define this slope. But we know if force is zero, acceleration has to be zero. And same as acceleration is zero force. And that means it has to just be this. There can't, there can't be something else on here plus, a, say, a two. Because then it wouldn't go through the origin. So it has to just be directly proportional. And that's how the graph shows it. Okay, I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll get to it.